think we'll wait for about 2 3 minutes and then start yeah yes sir विकास की आवाज नहीं आ रहा है चिन ऑफ स्ट्रक्चरल इंजीनियर एसोसिएशन ऑफ स्ट्रक्चरल इंजीनियर्स ऑल्सो नोन एज आई एस ट्रक्ट ए was conceptualized and constituted in the year 2002 by a group of senior professional structural engineers from all over the country IS Structi is registered under the Society's Registration Act 21 of 1860 IS Structi is a national apex body of structural engineers in India with a mission to promote structural engineering profession and cater to the professional needs of the structural fraternity in the short span of two decades association has attained an eminent position in the professional field its membership is valued very highly in the profession since Since inception IAS Trakti has been led by eminent structural engineers like late Sri Mahendra Raj, late Sri Sri Kumar Ghosh, Sri Subhash Chand Mehrotra, Professor Mahesh Tandon, Sri Alok Bhomik and Sri Manoj Mittal as its president. IAS Trakti is a permanent member of Engineering Council of India and interacts with the government on professional and policy matters related to civil and structural engineers. to expand its reach ia structi has collaboration with various international professional like minded associations and institutions ia structi's prime objective is supporting and protecting the profession of structural engineering by upholding professional standards and acting as a mouthpiece for structural engineers in india IA Structi endeavor to ensure that its members develop the necessary skill in structural engineering and work to the highest standards by maintaining a commitment to professional ethics and standards. IA Structi is actively engaged in organizing several continuing professional development CPD courses for structural engineers to help them upgrade their knowledge and advance their career paths. It also conducts refresher courses for young and practicing engineers and student oriented programs seminars workshops conferences technical lectures and discussions related to the latest technological advancements and case studies are also organized regularly for members to enable them to continuously update their knowledge and skill set by interacting with the best minds from the industry IS Structi's activities are widely appreciated and known for quality technical contents IA Structi is also actively engaged in publishing its quarterly journal Structural Engineering Digest SED code commentaries professional guidelines and a monthly newsletter IA Structi's publications are becoming popular with time IA Structi has representation in various technical committees of BIS and IRC as well its members are actively contributing to national code of formulations In the year 2020, IA Structi started national awards competition to stimulate interest in the structural engineering field and to promote innovative thinking and creativity. The awards are presented to the winners in recognition of their outstanding contribution to structural engineering in the categories which include outstanding structure, outstanding structural engineer, outstanding woman structural engineer, promising young structural engineer and best master's thesis in structural engineering IA Struct E is currently operating from four regional centers namely eastern western northern and southern having its headquarters in delhi to inculcate the professional culture and provide handholding to the budding engineers 
IA Strati has its student chapters in several leading engineering institutions as well. Membership of IA Strati is open to all civil and structural engineers engaged in structural engineering profession. Members are elected based on their qualifications and experience in different grades as per eligibility requirements prescribed in the bylaws. Each application is carefully scrutinized before electing the members. More information about IA Struct E is available on its website www.iastructe.co.in. Okay. Thank you, Vikas. Uh, hello, everybody, and good afternoon, good morning to one and all. Uh, we have a guest in the panel uh, from Switzerland. So good morning to you, David. Uh, welcome you all to this uh, curtain raiser webinar, which is on the topic of online course on certain time models in structures. That's a course which is going to start from 21st uh, January, that is next Saturday onwards, every Saturday. My name is uh, Alok Bhamik, and I am the chairman Professional Development and Technical Events Committee of IES Trakti. And this webinar that we have launched today is a precursor online course, which is, uh, which is uh, as I mentioned, uh, which is to commence on 21st of January. The prime objective uh, behind organizing this particular webinar is to explain to our fraternity the importance of this course and also the, the broad contents of this course. Uh, this is a course which uh, is important not only for the uh, practicing structural engineers, but is also extremely important for students, for the faculty, for the owner clients, and also for those who promotes use of concrete and cement in structures. Uh, for this webinar, we have an elite panel of experts as invited panelists. We have in the panel our uh, president, Mr. Manoj Mittal. We, we are privileged to have with us a Secretary General of FIB, Mr. David Fernandez. We have uh, Mr. Umesh Rajeshirke, Mr. V. N. Hegde. We also have a representative of Institution of Engineers India, who is our uh, supporting uh, association for the course. Uh, uh, we will be joined by uh, Dr. T. Visalakshi, who is the honorary secretary later. And also we will be joined by Professor Mahesh Tandon, uh, who hardly requires any introduction uh, in this panel. Uh, the structure of uh, today's program is uh, is there in the screen, as you can see. Uh, so uh, after I welcome all you all, let me now invite our uh, president, Mr. Manoj Mittal, to give his welcome address. Manoj, uh, evening, uh, is yours. Uh, thank you, Alok. Uh, good evening. And I welcome all the participants who have joined uh, this webinar. I particularly welcome uh, Secretary General FIB, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. David, uh, to this webinar. And I'm very happy that uh, we are organizing a online course uh, on certain time methods in structural concrete from next week onwards. So I believe this will be a successful uh, program and we will have a long-term association with FIB. I also welcome all the speakers and panelists and I hope uh, this cut and razor webinar will stimulate uh, uh, quite a uh, interest uh, so that they start joining uh, uh, our uh, refresher course from next week onwards. Uh, with this, I, I uh, request Alu to take the program forward. Thank you, Manoj. Uh, I would now request uh, Secretary General uh, FIB, Mr. David Fernandez, who has joined us from uh, Switzerland to kindly talk a little bit about FIB because this is a course which is jointly organized by IA Structi and FIB. And uh, you know, the major part of the of the technical part of the of the course will be handled by FIB. So I request you to kindly uh, brief uh, participants about FIB because many of them may not be aware of FIB, you know, as an organization. 
Thank, Thank you. you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I will share my screen in a, a presentation, quick presentation, and I will be happy to answer any questions uh, later. I will put the presentation mode. Uh, I don't. If you see the correct one, oh, let me do this uh, slideshow. Okay, now. Yeah. No, it's okay. I I understand that you can see it, so I can go on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I will just say, say that the FIB is emerged from uh, former associations that come from the 50s, the CEB and FIP. FIP more into the pre-stressing and more into, into, into the professional life and the CEB more into, into research and into the universities. And in 98, uh, we created uh, FI, FIB. Yeah, that, that's the, the merge of these two associations. We have uh, 41 member countries. In uh, one of these member countries is uh, India. It can, it's a federation, and that's why, why we have this, these countries. And uh, well, India now with the Institution of Engineers, but hopefully with uh, y Struct in the future also can participate in the national member group that has a lot of benefits. We have uh, members from more than 100 countries, no more than, um, than, the, than the national groups. About 2,500 persons are related to FIB in one way or another, working on the groups and so on. And what we try to do is, uh, this is a non-for-profit uh, organization that tries to create knowledge. The, all the, everybody is working in the FIB with... Uh, in a voluntary basis. And what we try to do is create this knowledge and share this knowledge with the community in several ways, eh? by publications, by events, and by other, other, other ways. Hmm? One is uh, the course we're doing today. We are run like uh, in a general assembly where all the, all the countries are. And then we have a board of directors that we call the presidium. But the most important technical body is the technical council, where we have, as you can see, many commissions that come from here and that uh, develop these uh, important documents. Um, the document that you will see in the course is coming from Commission 2 Analysis and Design, one of the groups that is coming from this Commission 2. But there are commissions from many, many topics, prefabrication and many other things. I will just say that uh, we have a young members group uh, that is very active and it's uh, in, uh, really people coming into the commissions and working together. And we have started this year a special activity group on sustainability. And, and this group is going to try to bring information about uh, CO2 and sustainability, low carbon concrete structures. And this, this group will start working very hard in this direction because the world is asking us to, to work a little bit in this direction too. Hmm? One of the, of the ways to share the knowledge is the, by the journal. We have a journal that has grown a lot. We have, uh, uh, for, you can see, almost 400 pages last, uh, last year and, and the year before. Uh, we are ranked in Q1 in, in several uh, indexes, and uh, it is possible to publish for free in the journal. This year, the journal has grown so much that it's going to be available online only, uh, before it was uh, printed also. And uh, you can access the members of FIB can access uh, free to the to the journal through a, through a link. They can also download the, the journal as a PDF for, for free. And we have a, a part of the journal that is not just scientific papers that we call short project notes and, and we are and that these are uh, short papers that we try that uh, we get practice uh, works from the community or designs from the community. I, I give you an example. It's two, three pages, so we make it easy for the for the for the people that are in um, in design and in construction to create this this uh, short project notes. So it's something that is maybe interesting not only for the researchers, but also for the professionals. And then we do books that we call bulletins. That is what you are going to see. Uh, the course is going to be based in one of the bulletins. The bulletin that you see here is 100. Yeah, and you, you can see we have bulletins on many, many different uh, parts of, uh, of uh, concrete construction. You see external tendons or 102 and 103 are quite interesting that uh, it's are about uh, protection and strengthening of concrete structures or precast high rise buildings you see there are many many ways of uh, of uh, sharing this knowledge the last bulletins that we uh, are publishing or we have published is the the awards that we give every four years 
or a bulletin that is being shipped right now, 105, about fiber reinforced concrete. That includes ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete, or the one in about bond that is going to be shipped ne uh, from next uh, weeks. Um, if you are an FIB member, you can also see the publications online. Uh, uh, there is a viewer that you can see the publications, you can search, you can you, you don't need to receive them, you can you can also see them there. Okay. And then we are working very hard on the model codes. You maybe have heard about the model code 2010. This is a code that is intended to uh, to be used by other codes uh, because it's the most advanced knowledge on concrete structures that is in the world. The last one we published is 2010. And now we are uh, finalizing the model code 2020 that will be available uh, hopefully uh, at the end of this year. We will approve it uh, in the in the Technical Council and General Assembly in Istanbul in June this year. So this is also an important information for when you design and you that your normative is not enough, sometimes you find a way to go on in this model code. We are doing a lot of events. Uh, in the past, we see we do PhD symposia or uh, we do symposia for sustainability. This is ICCS or and also a specific conceptual design symposia. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the ones that we have in the past, in the last uh, two, three years. And uh, what we have uh, next is this year, we have a symposium in Turkey and a conceptual design symposium in Oslo. And then the, the following one will be in, in Christchurch. And then you see we'll have a PhD symposium in Budapest and a sustainability symposium in, in Portugal. And um, I would uh, tell you that we have a lot of information in, uh, in our YouTube channel. A lot of presentations like webinars that we are doing are for free in, uh, as uh, videos, uh, presentations in, the, in our YouTube channel. So if you want, you can... Uh, just uh, follow our, our YouTube channel there, and then you will find a lot of uh, very interesting information about from the young members uh, webinars to the model code to uh, many of those bulletins that you see there. They are already being uh, published uh, as a webinar in, this, in these places. Mm -hmm. And just I want to finish saying that we have a very active young members group. And if any young member wants to get close to them, I will I will be happy to 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 join you to them. Uh, and they are doing uh, local uh, events, and uh, I think it's quite quite interesting. The young members for FIB uh, up to thirty five years they have half price in the in the um, in the membership, and the students below thirty are for free. So you know that uh, it's possible to get in touch with FIB and do things like that. And I'll be happy. I'll be, I am very happy to that the, this course is being done in in India, and will be really happy to keep on collaborating more and more. So this is my short presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions later. Also, thank you, thank you, David. Excellent. I think you have given them a brief about FIB and what FIB does. Only I just want to add one more thing that uh, FIB is formed by 42 national members in more than 100 countries, they have their presence. And there are more than 2,500 uh, members who are, who are members of FIB. And uh, by the way, these 42 countries who are the national member group, they produce uh, more than 85% of the cement in the world. Mm -hmm. So therefore they are major major uh, you know uh, provider for concrete structures and <clears throat> that's the importance mm -hmm. now uh, i go to the next part of our uh, uh, webinar today and let me take the responsibility of uh, sharing with you uh, a brief about the you know curtain uh, the the course which is going to start from 21st of january i will be answering three important questions to this uh, participants as to why one should attend this, how they are going to be benefited, and uh, what is there in the course. So let me share my uh, PPT. Uh, is my PPT visible? You'll have to go to the slide mode. Okay, just a minute, let me see how to do that presentation
I don't know how. How do we do that? अरे ओपो के नीचे सी आधे बॉटम देर इज अ स्क्रीन ना तो दैट टू जस्ट बिफोर द वॉल्यूम सिग्नल साइन हाँ दैट स्क्रीन प्रेस दैट स्क्रीन बटन देर इज अ वाइन ग्लास एट द राइट टाइम इट यू सी द वाइन इट इज अ स्क्रीन जस्ट टू वेट कमेंट्स नोट्स कमेंट्स एंड देन द नेक्स्ट लेट मी स्टॉप एंड डू इट अगेन मेबी � I'm sorry for this glitch. Yeah. Correct. Acha, you was not able to see that particular icon. Yeah. No, this thing is coming. Ah, now I got it. Just a minute. Okay, is it okay now? Clear? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay great, great. so uh, basically this uh, three points that i would like to answer first is why this course is uh, important uh, first and foremost you know this is a webinar workshop which will be enlightening the participants with the state of the art on on the start and tie model and the stress field model uh, though we have been using start and tie model for uh, last 4 5 decades but what we are doing in our country in our codes and standards and the practice and also in what we are taught in the colleges these are very very basic but uh, i think if you go through this course and if you go through the fib bulletin 100 you will find that there is huge and advancement which has taken place uh, on this concept of start and tie model and uh, stress field model also uh second is the approach to the uh, just a minute i think uh, yeah approach to the design uh, uh, provides awareness uh, of the uh, structural behavior and flow of forces this is one big benefit when you are using certain type model because in these limit analysis methods of design and detailing the engineers are uh, uh, kind of you know forced to sort of go into the flow of forces and the concepts and this understanding becomes clear to the young engineers if they apply this uh, method of uh, design and uh, therefore it is it is pretty good if uh, even at the student level or at the institutional level this uh, particular method of design is taught in detail as as uh, you know will be clear from this bulletin and uh, the approach helps to link the theoretical knowledge to practical application where design engineers are forced to think engineering behavior while framing the, uh, the mathematical model uh, as i mentioned originally the start and tie model and stress field model models was considered as tool mostly addressed to regions of you know uh, so called d region we have this b region and d region that is the region d, uh, disturbed region or near the concentrated loads or deep beams where the plane section do not remain plane mostly the application of certain type model used to be in those areas but uh, uh, this course will tell you and also this bulletin uh, makes it clear that uh, this concept can be applied uh, to even in the b region second question is how this course is going to benefit us uh, well uh well uh you know this publication is uh, uh, as i mentioned fib bulletin 100 is a publication showing the principal development and application and this publication is available at a discounted price to the registered participants of this course uh the i think the original cost of this bulletin is 120 uh, swiss francs but uh, there is a discount of about 66% if you are uh, 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 registering for this course so the participants will get it at uh, one third the price that is 40 swiss franc uh, the course gives a very basic and advanced information on how to create models for different level of approximation this is another concept which i think we uh, in, in india indian engineers may not be much aware of this uh, concept started from model code 2010 that is 
the level of approximation approach where as you go to the different levels of approximation the you know the uh, the um, the refinement in the analysis increases and you uh, i mean the initial levels of approximation one and two may be applied for new structures but when you are assessing the existing uh, structures then you may have to go to a higher level of approximation and do the analysis and stm and sfm is a huge hugely you know applicable tool for assessment of existing structures where by normal methods you may dis discard the the structure but when you use this refined methods you may you know um, sort of convince your uh, client or yourself that the structure is still having the reserve strength uh, how this uh, at attending this course will help all the stakeholders in the industry to comprehend and apply the method for new structures as well as for the assessment of the existing structures uh, how it will be benefited this is the chart which i prepared to show uh, if you are a student then understanding of this uh, stm concept at college level can be extremely helpful to students for concept development if you are a practicing structural engineering uh, structural engineer then the understanding of the advancement of the concept will help you to better deal with the structures as well as better deal with your clients many a times the strut and tie flow model uh, is better appreciated by the client because they can understand the flow of forces and the need for a particular reinforcement or sometimes you may you may find it very difficult to uh, convince your architect client that whether the beam depth is sufficient or the opening size is more and it is not possible but once you sh show in uh, the stress flow method uh, the flow of forces that uh, many a times helps you to sort of better uh, make your client appreciate about the about the problems as an educator the course content uses a consistent and underlying technical principles facilitating linkage between the physical behavior and design rules and this provides an opportunity for starting special uh, subjects in undergraduate and postgraduate courses in the college and this will be very useful for the uh, young engineers who come out of the college they are much better engineers if they uh, understand the flow of forces and they are hands on with this concept uh for the software developers course uh, and this fib bulletin 100 provides a complete design procedure and there is a huge scope for developing commercial softwares on stm and sfm concepts and as far as the client is concerned the client will finally benefit when this stm and sfm methods of design is followed in practice this will ensure safe serviceable durable and robust uh, structures uh this is the broad uh, you know outline of the course which starts from 21st of january so there are th total 13 video lectures uh, which will be shown and uh, it spread over four four saturdays uh, every saturday we will have 3 to 6 3 hours out of which initially we will run uh, the video lectures in the sequence in which it is available and if after end of showing video lectures we will have live panel discussion where the faculty those who are uh, actually the architect or the authors of the fib bulletin 100 will be present live and q and a session uh, will be handled by them directly so you get a huge opportunity uh, if you are participating in this course to have a live discussion with the authors and uh, uh i think this course on the whole is pretty useful there are total 11 renowned experts from all over the world who will be participating live during the panel discussion and these experts are all part of the fib commission 2 which david just mentioned you know task group 2.24 responsible for the publication of this state of the art certain uh, type modeling bulletin that's all from my side uh, all i want to add here is that uh, if you are participant in this uh, course then you will also be uh, 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 you know given a free software uh, which can be uh, which can be used for uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, 
this fem and sf sfm uh, you know finite element models and all and there are some tutorials and also video tutorials available which will be uh, which can be used for you know upgrading yourself prepare yourself for the course and if you are part if you are registering and in advance then these uh, uh, you know uh, softwares can be given to the participant registered participants well in advance so that they come prepared for the course and i also would uh, uh, request or other those participants if they can also buy the bulletin beforehand and uh, just go through that before the course starts so that they are prepared and they they will uh, fully comprehend the uh, during the during the lectures the subject uh, this uh, the list of registered participants will be given to fib by us from the indian association of structural engineers and uh, they will get a, a a code by based which by, based on which they can download after making the payment uh, discounted uh, price for the bulletin thank you now uh, now i will request uh, my friend mr umesh raj shirke to uh, uh, make the presentation highlighting the salient technical features of the course content but before i do that i have the honor to introduce mr raj shirke who is the vice president of uh, ias trakti um, mr raj shirke is a managing director of spectrum techno consult consultant private limited he has more than 31 years of experience in planning design of bridges flyovers large span steel structures marine facilities industrial structures pre stressed and reinforced concrete structures shell structures etc he is a graduate from vjti mumbai 1987 and did his masters from iit madras in 1991 he is involved in design of many prestigious structures like cable straight bridges number of precast segmental bridges metro rail long span steel trusses and arch bridges and also nuclear containment structures he is a member of various bias and irc committees and published number of papers in national and international conferences and journals so with this uh, i would hand over this virtual platform to mr rajesh irke rajesh. oh thank you thank you alok for your kind introduction and uh, good afternoon good morning to all the participants i struck me as taken a very great initiative to uh, conduct this webinar starting from the next saturday so it is a quite intensive quite uh, technically loaded and it uh, uh, gives a, the latest developments in this particular area many of the concepts this uh, presenters will uh, present may be a quite new to our indian enge engineers so what we thought better to give one a precursor to this course go to the just like a refresh this strat and time model uh, uh, and what are the new concepts who are going to uh, receive in coming 13 lectures so i will just touch up on that so the everybody will at least have a, some idea what we are going to hear from the next saturday onward so in my this about some 30 40 minutes lecture i will first go to the development of this strat and time model and the uh, stress field model in last couple of uh, decades and what are these new developments and uh, i will touch upon the provisions given in uh, fib model code 2010 with respect to that uh, i will present one solved example very short example how we can apply this particular strat and time model for any real life project and uh, then uh, very brief what are the uh, this uh, uh, experts are going to present in the next 13 lectures so that is a basically the overview of my this uh, about 30 to 40 minutes lecture so let's see how this particular strat and uh, time model and the uh, stress field model got developed over the years
so as rcc started gaining the popularity about 100 years back the designer search for a rational tool rather than some empirical methods and uh, initially they developed a fictitious trust model where the compression the concrete strong in the compression uh, uh, was modeled as a strut and uh, still strong in the tension it was modeled as a ties so this is the bottom tie and then there are the stirrups which is the vertical ties so this model was quite uh, long in the practice in fact today also we are using it but as uh, the structures get more and more complex engineers mainly germans they started using a linear static stress pattern initially obtained using analytical that is our uh, theory of elasticity etc and uh, photoelastic method which was quite popular in 60s and 70s and later by linear finite element method to construct the stress model using the stress pattern through this analysis so this particular method of a combining the strut and tie model uh, model method and uh, or a stress analogy method and this uh, a stress pattern that opened the doors for analysis and design of a more complex structure where the classical bernoulli theory, theorem is not valid the classical bernoulli theorem is the plane section remains plane somewhere at a mid span but as you go towards the say, um, support this particular hypothesis do not valid the stra strain distribution across the section becomes non linear not only at a support but whenever there is application of the load so there the engineers always used to struggle for uh, getting the proper uh, or optimum uh, um, amount of the reinforcement or the uh, sizes of the concrete sections so this combination helped the engineers to uh, design those complex sections or complicated uh, structures and this method was termed as a strut and tie uh, method Uh, many of our old fair reference like alok or maybe hegde may remember in 1993 there was a one three day workshop by professor george slice at uh, vidyan bhavan in delhi and that was this particular that time this particular method was first introduced in india and it was a quite successful workshop arranged by iabsc and then this particular method got popularity in uh, india so what are this uh, 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 basically b region and d region b is for bernoulli where the plane section remains plane the linear strain distribution across the section occurs but as you move towards the support this strain distribution becomes a non linear and then we struggle for designing that particular region which is called a d region d for a discontinuity uh then uh, this uh, such situation where the strain distribution is not a linear we came across in number of situations the very uh, popular example is a dip beam where there are the supports here and the applied load is here and the strain distribution is something like this not a plane or not a linear and uh, not only in such uh, examples but if you go the our standard buildings our regular buildings you will come across this d regions at many locations so this is a typical building cross section you can find the d regions at v and turn corners or where there are openings or there are corbels or there is a open foundation or a pile foundation and wherever the loads are applied at those particular points so such d regions are every are everywhere in our structure so how once that particular method got matured in 70s and 80s the canadian courts were the first to adopt this method 
uh, in their code uh, in uh, 1984, the method as a general uh, design method. Then it was a formally incorporated in the FIB model code 1990. And thereafter, it was followed in many other uh, national codes, including the American, ACI, and so on. So along with this development and the maturation of this cut and tie model, which is based on a uh, linear elastic uh, constitutive relationship, uh, the researchers started incorporating this theory of a plasticity to RCC. And uh, the, uh, one minute, uh, just uh, uh, the new avenues to find the uh, uh, number of uh, solutions. So this theory of plasticity uh, is based on a lower bound theorem of a limit analysis. The approach is a termed as a stress field method with the compression fields and the tension fields. This limit analysis is a, gives a multiple solution, but on a lower bound and designer has a many choices to select based on uh, uh, the which solution gives the more optimum uh, results. And then the up-to-date, updated and revised uh, FIB model code 2010, the complemented uh, with the use of this stress field method uh, with this new revision of uh, FIB model code uh, 2010. In our code, that is the IRC 112, we have also used this variable angle uh, uh, method for a compression strut for a shear check, which is also based on a certain time model and a uh, uh, stress field method. But there is a no formal uh, method is a given in none of our code, whether it is a IS code or IRC codes. That is, we need to develop uh, as fast as possible, as early as possible. So seeing the advantage of this lower bound theorem, that is, a, which gives a multiple solutions, designers start exploring its use in the strut and time method, which was based on a linear elastic behavior earlier. Now, and now it, uh, designers started using the same method, but using a rigid plasticity. Rigid plasticity, it can be depicted like this. This is a compression area, this is a tension area. So you can go directly to the this uh, plateau. This is the basically beauty of this uh, limit analysis. It is not a limit state. It is a limit analysis uh, where you can directly go to the solution without any iteration or any uh, uh, cycles. The strut and time models can be constructed using a stress field method models replacing the stress field by strut and ties. Both these methods are complementary to each other, evolved simultaneously with the advance, advent of the computers and the modern structure, uh, uh, softwares of uh, uh, analysis. With this developments, now the scope of a strut and time model was widened and generalized not only for the division, but also for the B regions, where the plane section remains plane. Thus, the approach allows a consistent design for a structural concrete members without any distinction between the, what the type of the region it is, whether it is a D or B. So it started giving the consistent design approach. Earlier, it used to uh, use for the design of a ultimate limit state and detailing of the discontinuity region, that is a D region. Mm -hmm. But with uh, this uh, advances in a stress flow, uh, uh, stress field method and this computational uh, 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 methods available, uh, we can use this method for service field limit state by verification of a spill stresses 
concrete uh, crack width control if approximate compatibility for a strut and prime models is ensured so earlier we used to have a this rigid uh, uh, earlier the uh, elastic method so linear elastic method but with the uh, uh, fib uh, 2010 we were using the rigid plastic uh, perfectly plastic uh, stress tension curve now we can use the linear elastic perfectly plastic the, this is linear this is a perfectly plastic or it could be a non linear elastic and perfectly plastic and same thing is with a reinforcement so the new uh, models or methods now use this um, uh, stress tension diagram curves how uh, for this strut and tie as well as the stress field method so that gives a very uh, strong tool in hands of a uh, engineers to apply this particular method for a uh, service utility limit state as well as uh, assessing the strength of the existing structure now what are the steps involved in the, our normal conventional uh, strut and tie method first we have to draw the free body diagram with the initial strut and tie model uh, it should uh, represent the force flow within the structure that is this is a tension tie these are the struts in a compression this is again a uh, since the uh, direction is changing there will be another tie here and further struts the forces in the model must represent an equilibrium system of the internal forces and external forces so we have to achieve that equilibrium directions and the magnitudes of the forces of the model may be oriented in a corresponding linear elastic stress state so if you whatever the elastic stress state is there accordingly you have to orient these uh, members in order to minimize the effect has of the redistribution of the forces the struts should be as much as possible oriented to the compressive stress trajectories in the uncracked strut so whatever the compressive uh, uh, stress trajectories are there uh, you can orient this strut in that direction this is a very simple example but once the um, um, the situation gets complicated this uh principal stresses direction becomes a very helpful to decide the direction and the uh, uh, location of this strut and ties so now let's see some a uh, few simple examples how these models can vary depending on the boundary conditions or the support conditions and applied loads say for example this is a simply supported beam uh, the uh, these are the reactions and these are the load applied so how the uh, strut and tie model could be so there will be a tension here there will be a struts or compressions here and then this there is will be a strut strut connecting these two nodes so this is a basically the solution now if i change the supports how from the positive to the hanging one or a, uh, uh, at the top how uh, the situation will be like this and the model for this will be something like this Uh, so these are the ties with the tension and these are the strut same thing suppose if i have a one uh, hanging and support and other is a positive support it will be something like this now instead of applying a load at the top if i apply a load at the bottom the strut and tie model will look like this so these are the simple examples uh, or the, uh, the problems uh, where such a simple um, models can be developed i have taken these examples from uh, fib model code 2010 same thing uh, uh, with this particular situation we come across a prestressing anchor location where there is a anchorage and there is a uh the stress get uniformly distributed after a certain distance so to uh, solve this problem the strut and tie model could be something like this and this is the what the tie and where we provide the bursting reinforcement in this location 
same thing if the direction of the forces gets reversed that is a, uh, towards outer uh, side uh, then the strut and time model will be something like this then at a corner which is the uh, say the opening corner the model will look like this and for the closing corner it will be something like this so these are a very simple uh, models uh, which will be useful uh, to uh, practice and to get a clarity if the some difficult situation arises how to build the strut and time model so these are the once you develop this particular model then what is the next step next step is we have to check the stresses in the strut the ties uh, and you, you have to provide the uh, corresponding material then you have to check the geometry of the nodes and detailing of the reinforcement to be developed the nodes struts and ties of the final model must comply with the detailing of the reinforcement and if required you have you can devise the model depending on how you are positioning the reinforcement so with this background i will just go through one small uh, solved example Uh, sorry before that uh, let's see what should be the how to design this particular struts nodes and ties so i have taken a reference as uh, this fib model code 2010 and um, so there whatever the provisions are given say for example strut it is to be checked uh, for this uh, uh, i am not able to there is something uh, getting just a minute stop sharing uh, yeah uh, the struts to be checked for a reduced concrete compression strength which is a factored by kc this is fct is a actually in a, all her documents of fib the fck is uh, given in terms of a cylindrical strength so here in india you have to uh, take care for converting the cylindrical strength or a cube strength to the cylindrical strength so that conversion uh, you should be uh, uh, careful and divided by this uh, gamma which is a 1.5 for a regular uh, load combinations so for this reduced compressive strength that is a kc for a different situation this kc the code has given that the fib model code 2010 uh, for undisturbed uniaxial compression and with the transverse comp with a uh, compression this kc is a 1 uh, uh, into uh, eta fc what is that eta fc that we will see uh, in a couple of minutes so this is with the uniaxial compression with the transverse compression if for the strut there is a transverse tension like this this factor becomes 0.75 eta fc and if this transverse tension is in a oblique direction like this then this kc becomes 0.55 eta fc now this eta fc it depends on us uh, the strength of the compressive strength of the concrete so which is given by this 30 divided by fck fck is in a cylindrical strength raised to 1 by 1/3 and it has to be lesser than 1 so for a cylindrical strength of a 30 the eta fc becomes 1 if the cylindrical strength is a more than 30 say it becomes so say 60 then it will be half of 1/3 so it gets reduced so for a high grade of a concrete this reduction factor is a further reduced so these are the reduction factor is given for a strut now there is a suppose uh, confined compression then these numbers can be increased by further 10% if there is a biaxial state of a compression is assured and all the um, angles uh, uh, the angle between the strut and ties is greater than 45 degree and the reinforcement is arranged in a multiple layers so this gives you the reduction factor for the strut same thing for the ties the design strength for the tensile fields or ties are given below for reinforcement is the yield strength divided by gamma s gamma is is 
for a pre-stressing steel, it will be the 0.1 percent proof stress divided by the gamma s. And in case of post-tension members, whatever that initial pre-stress is there, that is the initial pre-stress. So that we have to add in this change in a force because of that applied loading. Accordingly, we have to get this final uh, FPD. If appropriate, the reinforcement required to resist the force may be distributed uh, over the relevant length. So this gives the design criteria for the ties. And then we'll come to the how, what is the criteria given for the nodes. In the nodes, there could be a various uh, situations. The maximum stress to be applied at the edge of the node is limited to sigma rd max, which is again a Kc multiplied by Fck divided by um, gamma c. The compression nodes without a tie is anchored at a node, the reduction factor is a 1 into eta Fc. Eta Fc is the same as what we have seen in the previous slides. So this is the particular node where there is a compression from all the sides. This is a say bearing plate. There is a one strut is coming in one direction and other is from other directions. So the entire node is in a state of a compression. So there we don't have to reduce any uh, permissible stress. You can use Fck divided by gamma c. But if it, there is a say uh, good amount of a biaxial compression, then in fact you can increase this permissible stress by 10 percent as what we have seen in case of a strut also. Uh, then uh, there are uh, nodes like a compression tension node with the uh, anchor ties uh, provided in one or two directions like this. This is the compression and there is a uh, tie from the one direction or at a corner how you have ties in the two directions. This is a horizontal and vertical. So the resultant, you get a compression in the this particular result, resultant direction. So for this compression tension node with the anchor ties provided in one or two direction, the reduction factor is Kc is equal to 0.75 eta Fc. So in presence of the tension, the uh, reduction factor is a 0.75 or 75% reduction. You have to start this uh, anchorage from the inner side of the uh, uh, this particular node. This is the starting of the node or a bearing plate. So you have to measure the LD or the anchorage length from this particular region. The anchorage length should be extended over the entire node length. The anchorage of the reinforcement bar behind the node is strongly recommended in case where the member dimensions are large enough. If the, you have got a enough space, then better to increase the reinforcement in that particular zone also. The type of anchor, this type of anchorage is beneficial as it creates the state of a pure compression in the node. So these are the guidelines given for the design of the nodes. So with this background, uh, let's uh, go through one solved example, uh, which is the end diaphragm of a, uh, a bridge box girder. This is the uh, uh, the cross section. It is for this uh, project Iroli Katai Naka elevated corridor in Navi Mumbai. The span was a 40 meter. Carriageway was width was a 24 meter, six length uh, the live load. The superstructure was a spine and wing. So there was a, a dilemma: how this particular the shear coming from the wave how will transfer how in the uh, this diaphragm because the shear will be always through the entire wave okay and how it will transfer to the bearing and similarly how what will happen when there is a uh, uh, we have to lift the girder using the jacks this particular uh, cross section was a pre-stressed using the uh, transverse uh, pt okay so there is a compression because of a uh, uh, transverse pre-stress as well as because of this cantilevering, there is a compression at this particular region also. So these are the dimensions. 
there is opening at the center and uh, to analyze uh, okay so this is the grid of a concrete m60 which is in a cube so cylindrical will be multiplied by 0.8 will be a 48 mpa the rate of a reinforcing steel was uh, 500 mpa is a uh, ill strength diaphragm thickness was a 650 bearing plate size was uh, 800 by 800 load transferred to the diaphragm was uh, almost 17500 kilonewton in a ultimately limit state combination approximately 80% load gets transferred to the weight and 20% uh, from the top flange so 80% of this particular value is uh, 7000 kilonewton and 20% is the 3500 7000 is of in each wave there are two waves so there is a one uh, uh, software which is a shareware uh, called a cast which is a computer aided strut and tie so using that software uh, this particular uh, model was developed and load was applied now we will be wondering why uh, what about this opening what is the influence of this opening on the stress distribution whether we need a a uh, few ties or few struts uh, around this opening. Now, uh, to get an answer of, of a, uh, such problems, you have to go with a stress field or you have to analyze this particular uh, element uh, using a finite element method. So, uh, already that uh, 3D model was available and uh, Okay, prior to that, this particular uh, model was uh, run on this uh, software and the forces were obtained. Now to ascertain what is the effect of this opening, this uh, uh, plate element of this uh, diaphragm was developed in a, a regular a finite element software like a sophistic. And uh, this was a principal stress pattern uh, in this uh, diaphragm. For the given load that is the load applied on this uh, waves and uh, the load transferring from this top uh, slab so generally what we found that the stresses around the opening are not that significant to have an additional tie or a strut so whatever the model were assumed uh, in this particular uh, strut and tie that is adequate now after getting this forces in the struts and this tie, ties are marked in orange and the struts are in dotted lines, blue lines. So now using the provisions given in the FIB model code 2010, we have to verify whether these stresses are within the limit or not. So let's see. Uh, so this is the first is the top uh, slab tie member, which is uh, given uh, here. And the force was, um, uh, uh, 1115 and there is again a component here because of see this uh, force from the wave coming from the girder was applied at two locations um, uh, 3500 at the top node and 3500 at the bottom node because um, uh, the entire force is getting transferred through this wave so you have to apply it uh, at the nodes and uh, because of see, this particular force was applied in the direction of the tie, but because of some limitations of the software, it was not possible to apply in this direction. So this particular uh, force was applied in a vertical direction. Now, whatever that force is there in the tie, uh, the, some component will, horizontal component will be there in this um, uh, tie member. So that uh, this angle is a nine degree. So that component is added in this uh, uh, force. So it was the total force was 1,670 kilonewton. So as per the FIB uh, model code 2010, uh, this is a uh, FI was a 500 divided by 1.15. You will get a 435. So the area requirement was a 3,839 millimeter square. Okay. So now that particular uh, still you have to. Uh, provided in the diaphragm. So this is the cross section of the diaphragm. And uh, these are the bars 
bar number 120, 21 and 22 uh, are provided in this particular uh, as a tie. So this is the tie member which is coming out of the plane and this particular cluster of the bars that is a, uh, this uh, 5 bars plus 5 plus 5 and few bars from here that constitute the one tie element. So all these bars is basically 400 uh, 4710 millimeter square as uh, against the requirement of a 3839. So the provided reinforcement is adequate. Um, then uh, uh, this vertical uh, tie, because the force will get transferred from here to this particular node. And the force was 3543. Um, and since we are providing the reinforcement in a vertical direction and not in a uh, this inclined direction, uh, that particular uh, uh, component uh, is considered by multiplied by cos of this nine degree. So the T1 is of 3500. The required reinforcement is uh, by dividing the allowable stress is 8,054 8, uh, millimeter square. So this reinforcement now we have to provide in this uh, in the vertical direction. So that is this is the uh, uh, horizontal cross section of the diaphragm, and these are the bars hmm, provided to uh, uh, carry that tension uh, to the tie. So the provided reinforcement is total reinforcement is nine hundred uh, nine thousand nine hundred and twenty four. After uh, uh, sizing this reinforcement. Uh, we have to check the nodes. So this uh, eta uh, FC is a 30 divided by FCK. FCK is a 48. So that eta FCK for a concrete is a 0.85. And uh, this uh, KC uh, for the, see this first node, uh, which is uh, at the bottom, node number one is uh, somewhere here. This is the node, node number one, which is a compression, compression, compression. The entire thing is in the compression. Uh, the compression region. So it is a, uh, called a CCC node and the reduction factor is a one. Um, so the KC is equal to one into 0.85 is a 0.85. Multiplying by this, you get a permissible stress for this node one is a 27.2 MPa. Similarly for node and one and two, which is a compression tension, uh, the factor is a 0.75. Eta C is a 0.85. So if you multiply and apply it together, it becomes a 0 0.6375. And the permissible stress in this particular node is 20.4 MPa. So once you get this permissible uh, stresses as per FIB model code, uh, you find out what are the stresses here. So this is the sigma 1 for the, this particular strut. This is a sigma 2. This is a sigma 3 is a horizontal strut. And this is a stress in the node, which is a uh, sigma 4. So once you calculate all the stresses, that is the 25 or 6, 15 or 20, are less than this 27.2 MPa uh, allowed in the code. So this is how we have checked the stresses in this particular node. Similarly, for the other node, that's the node number 2 and 3, uh, these are the stresses. This is the node number 2, and this is the node number 3. So here, uh, this uh, sigma 1 is here, uh, sigma 2 is in this direction, uh, sigma 1 is again 18.64 which is lesser than 20.4 and sigma 3 obviously it will be very small uh, is uh, 6.10 uh, well within the limit. So this is how we are, we are checking this strut and time model using the uh, total provision. So after the publication of uh, this MC uh, 2010, uh, so there are a lot many developments uh, happened in last 10 years, which obvious, uh, of course uh, the other, uh, you, you are going to listen in the next uh, 13 lecture, but I will just give you the brief. Uh, the main important is a framework of, a, as Alok uh, told in the beginning, is the framework of a level of approximation. It was initially introduced in the MC 2010, but it was not uh, extended to strut and time method or uh, uh, this stress, stress field method. For these two methods, only uh, one method was given, which we have seen in this solved example. 
so in this particular uh, bulletin uh, this both the methods are brought under the framework of this um uh, level of approximation and uh, definitely we may see this particular uh, development in the uh, new code uh, that is a uh, model code 2020 so now it gives a consistent framework of the other provisions so not only the classical richard plastic solution which we used to use earlier now also the solution considering the compatibility of the deformation such as the elastic plastic approach is being used or it is been proposed in this new bulletin 100 the verification of a solubility behavior and deformation capacity of the concrete structures are using uh, the level of approximation 4 so now what is that those level of approximations uh, okay uh, thus all the models share the same ground and a fundamental hypothesis giving the unitary and a consistent approach for entire uh, uh fiv model code so this uh, uh with this thing we, uh, the things are getting ready for the incorporation of the futuristic code which is the fiv model code 2020 now what are this uh, level of approximation so as you uh, different level of accuracy of the design and assessment of the concrete structure as you want to have a more and more accuracy you need a more and more time so you have to choose cleverly what uh, level of accuracy or what kind of a level of approximation you need for your design so level 1 it is generally represent the most simple and straight forward approach valid for a standard cases reserved for a structures where the high accuracy is not required it can be used for a pre design of a structure in more general way, sense where whereas the other higher uh, levels are generally requires a more effort but may lead to the more economical solutions used in a cases where the higher accuracy is required for example assessment of the existing structure for a bearing capacity supporting the decision whether the repairs is required or not and as well as this uh, finding out the crack weights or deformations so suitable design strategy consists of uh, using a low order loi uh, level of approximations for the first design phase and a higher approximation level of approximations for the last design phases this strategy applies to the existing assessment of the existing structures so this uh, particular level of approximation in the bulletin 100 uh, it is given in this particular fashion i will not go into detail because you are going to listen from the experts um uh, these are the uses for ultimate limit state for new designs these are the for the assessment of the existing structures uh, apart from the assessment of existing structure you can use for a surveyable limit state for a, uh, using a loa4 and uh, these are the constitutive relationship of rigid plastic rigid plastic this is a elastic plastic and this is a non linear uh, plastic and these are the various models this is what output you are going to get using this various level of uh, approximations so with this uh, this is the what uh, time tables which uh, alok has uh, shown and it is uh, there in the our flyer so i will not go into the details and uh, uh these are the various references uh, which deals with the strat and time model and i use it, we use them for uh, this particular presentation this is a model code 2010 this is a bulletin number 100 there is a another excellent document uh, prior to 100 which is a bulletin number 61 and it uh, covers is given a very excellent example solved examples uh for this strat and time model which is a bulletin number 61 and prior to that fib published a uh, design example which were based on a uh, one very important document uh before uh, uh we had a fib uh that is the 1996 fib recommendations that is the practical design for a structural uh, concrete and very recently there is a all these authors or the, all these speakers have published a very wonderful one wonderful paper in a, a fib journal which is the structural concrete 
so that also you can refer ha huh, for your further studies so okay so that is the end of my presentation so i hope that you have got a overview what that particular method is how it has got evolved how to use it for actual structure and what we are going to hear from all the speakers in next four saturdays so thank you thank you thank you mr rajesh shirke for such an excellent uh, overview uh, very lucid presentation and uh, i think the participants would have got a fairly good idea of what they are going to uh, sort of uh, get in yeah. the in the course uh, uh, two things i just wanted to mention here number one uh, you know many questions i have seen in the q and a box uh, and also in the chat box about the purchase code for fib bulletin 100 and um, i i would like to ask uh, dr david on this uh, they are asking when uh, this purchase code can be given now you see uh, so far we have received number of registration but uh, we still have one week to go and uh, uh, maybe by the end of uh, next friday we will get a complete list not before that but uh, maybe we can uh, share with you uh, dr david the those who are already registered and you, you uh, if they you share yeah. with us the, the list of the persons we we will include them in our database and, uh, and then they can buy the the with the code in the in the fib in the fib web page yes okay so uh, those who have already registered they will receive a communication from fib about the purchase code and uh, they have to uh, sort of make the payments and then get the uh, you know electronic yeah, version hello hello i have one one request sorry for interrupting if uh, fib or david can uh, give a concession for other two very important documents that is fib bulletin 61 and 16 Ah, uh, these are really great documents. So our uh, users, ah, uh, will get access to those documents if they are also made available to them. Just one we request. Can, we can do the same thing and include the the code that includes all the documents. Okay. If I be bullet in sixty one and which one you said? Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, one six. One six. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. And. Um, and also those who have registered they will receive from ia structure itself a, a link for downloading the software that that can be done whoever have registered they will be able to download the software uh, but with a disclaimer that this software is not a commercial it's not you are not purchasing the software it is only for use for the purpose of education and uh, so that you can you know uh, sort of Uh, prepare yourself for the for the course, and that can be done uh, from the moment you register. It can be done. Uh, now uh, I will uh, I will uh, sort of uh, open the floor. Uh, let me let me welcome Professor Mahesh Tandon who has joined now. I don't know whether Dr. Visalakshi has joined. She has not joined. So Tandon Sab, uh, welcome to this webinar. Are you there? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are moving, I think. So, <laughs> welcome. You must have uh, listened to the lecture of Mr. Rajesh. I don't know when you joined, but uh, uh, if you are about ten, ten, ten minutes, minutes ago, so it's not uh, okay. So, I think you okay. go ahead with the other panelists because <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, uh, I would, I would. Uh, request mr hegde to give his views uh, you have heard everybody and you also can give some your remarks on on the course as well as the lecture that you have heard today yeah thank you alok uh, first of all let me congratulate uh, mr uh, umesh rajshikhe for excellent overview of the course which is going to come uh, in the future and he has uh, really highlighted the importance of uh, this particular course as he said in his uh, opening remarks i remember that uh, i i remember that uh, you know like in 1993 i think you know yeah, yeah. on 
we had a course uh, which was organized by IABSC, that was uh, uh, ING IABSC, on the design of uh, structural concrete uh, by using the strut and tie model. I still <clears> remember <throat> dog slice uh, talking about, you know, dog slice and uh, Bagaman was there. I think they are from Slice Bagaman and Partners, uh, you know, organization uh, that come and uh, they delivered a, a very important uh, course. And he started his uh, presentation saying that, you know, the good design can come from only the intimate understanding of the flow of the forces. Without understanding the flow of the forces, if any design is done, that design is found to be uh, not uh, that good design. And in my opinion, as has been explained by Alok as well as uh, uh, Umesh Rajshetki, the understanding of the flow of the forces can come only by, you know, like following the strict and time uh, method. By doing any finite element analysis, I don't think it's possible for us to understand this, the flow of the forces in the structure. That is the reason if, uh, if all the participants uh, uh, who have gone through the presentation of Mr. Rajshetki, uh, you know, like when it comes to the discontinuity region, they mentioned about the discontinuity region or D region, where plane section will not remain the plane because of the static, statical or the geometrical discontinuity, deform, you know, discontinuity. That's what happens. Basically where it happens, it happens at the beam supports, frame corners, as well as the corbels. That is what we call it. Uh, if, if the detailing is done without understanding the flow of forces in the discontinuity region, what happens is the failures taken, take place. Many of the failures which have been taking place uh, uh, in, in India because of the design, I'm talking about the failures which is happening because of the design is because of the improper detailing. You know, I, 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 why the improper detailing happens because the detailing aspect cannot be understood by the finite element analysis, the conventional uh, finite element analysis, which we normally do it. So it is very important even for us from the sustainability point of view, that is to avoid the collapses, the proper detailing has to be done for detailing to be understood the internal forces flow in the structure, especially in the uh, discontinuity region has to be understood. I think that's very important. I think it has been very well brought out by uh, Mr. Rajshir K in his uh, uh, presentation. It's only a, a curtain raiser or a trailer. Yeah, yeah. It's only a curtain raiser or a trailer which you have seen now. And uh, since uh, that uh, course, which has been organized by uh, Professor Slice uh, in, uh, in 1993 by, he, in fact, he had given the worked out examples also, you know, like we were made to sit down there and do some, you know, calculations. Yeah, over, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, remember that, you know, we did some exercises also yes. over there to understand that. And uh, since then, a lot of advancement has taken place in the, uh, strut and tie model, what we call it as a stress field uh, theory now. And what the Americans of the ACI, American Concrete Institute, whoever is coming from the Western countries or the Canadians uh, call it as a compressive field theory or the modified right. compressive uh, field theory, what is called a stress field theory here. If we really look at it, our IRC 112 also, the shear clause is entirely based on the uh, stress field stress flow method, yes. Stress field theory, actually. Stress field theory, yeah. What Americans call it as a uh, Americans call it as a modified compressive uh, uh, field theory. Now, when uh, Doctor Slice or a Professor Slice, uh, you know, like he was making the presentation, uh, it, see the the strut and tie model. He also talked. He was talking about the trajectory of force uh, force flow. In, uh, what, when you say trajectory of force flow, what does it mean? Is basically that. Uh, that the strut, one strut is converted into many of the trajectories, uh, trajectories of the forces. That is how the stress field theory, you know, comes into the yeah. picture. When it is widened, basically widened into the picture, and that the inclination is converted into the verticality, and you provide the shear reinforcement in the this one. That's how it happens. So all the advancement, even to the level of I think applying it to the SLS, that is the serviceability limit state, has been done in this. Uh, a uh, particular uh, uh, model code, uh, a particular FIB uh, bulletin number 100, that is what is going to be explained. I think it's a very, very interesting course. And especially for the students, I recommend it strongly, students as well as the academician, 
who are teaching in the colleges because by going through this course even the seniors like us will again would like to you know like uh, it is a sort of a refresher course for us to understand the basics of the rcc design itself basics of the force flow itself and the latest advancement which is uh, taking place i request all of you to you know like uh, encourage your friends also the colleagues also the peers also to participate in this particular uh, you know uh, webinar or the refresher course which we are conducting it will be immensely helpful and i am sure by attending it many of the failures which has been taking place unabated especially in the concrete construction will be avoided by avoiding this course that's what uh, i'm looking forward to and uh, thank you sabit thank you sabit don't lose this opportunity uh, maximum uh, uh, in uh, attend it in the maximum numbers that's what my request to all the participants today and also uh, disseminate among others about this course thank Hello. you thank you egri sir i think we it's 5:30 now and uh, i think we would like to close it by another 15 minutes so let me get into the uh, you know questions uh, first and then uh, when mr mahesh tandon sub you know stabilizes he's still moving it seems then i will uh, come back to him and mr shishir banerji but first <laughs> let me take few questions uh, one question from uh, alexandros uh, is i would like to ask if uh in the seminar we'll have the chance to see some examples quite often used in our work like design of peer segments as well as the peer design certain time model uh i can answer this question yes the video lectures that you will see will show many uh, many examples uh, including the hand calculation as well as the you know various forms of uh, finite element method and the stress panel everything will be shown it's kind of a workshop so you will be able to uh, you see that uh, live the not live the the video lectures showing the worked examples uh, next question from amol singh thank you for organizing the series i would like to second mr amrinder singh comments on the purchase code which i think we have explained uh, amrinder singh is asking do we get the recordings of the entire course to go through once again uh if you are talking about the course which starts from 21st january uh no uh, video recordings will not be shared uh if you are a, if if you are a registered participant and if you miss uh, due to some unavoidable circumstances then you will be given a, of course the lecture but for a limited time uh, for one time uh, view and that too it will have an expiry but otherwise in general the video will not be shared uh siddharth shankar writes so stm also considered the contribution of cracked concrete please explain anyone uh, mr shirke uh, would like to take this yeah yeah it can be see you know various uh, level of uh, approximation you can have a st uh, st tension stiffening effect after the cracking so that is see now with this level of approximation framework how uh, you can have uh, any complications ha uh, in this uh, model so there is no limit and I, okay. I, i think to get the answer i think you should attend the course yeah yeah attend the <laughs> lectures <laughs> okay. you are from the horse's mouth ha uh, you have to wait okay so uh, mr mahesh shankaran is asking please can you clarify how to transfer the moments from column base to the pile cap using stm so i think yeah. you have to attend the course okay <laughs> <laughs> it is there and uh, there are number of solved examples are there uh, so it is possible to develop the certain time model whatever the example i have gone this is in a 3d but you can develop obviously this uh, models in a three dimension also so all this uh, especially pile cap etc uh, they are uh, basically the right uh, candidate for this particular method okay uh, rekha shrestha is asking how to connect brick masonry strut with rc frame again this brick masonry you have to develop the models so who do have a models only for the concrete and the steel for a brick uh, uh, till now there is a no uh, data so once that data is available some experiments are there yes it can be developed for the brick also yes yeah okay uh, then alexandros is asking again why it is mentioned in the theory of this stm that we have to consider strut with angle less than 25 degree 
No, nothing. Not, not, uh, 20, not 25. It was no, 45. not 25, I think. It was a 45 for the angle between the ties and the strut. Mm-hmm. Ah, so, uh, anyway, we will ask the experts ah, that time. Yeah. I don't have an answer. Really. When we come I think the... all technical questions. Yeah. Uh, better, if, if, if it's for the experts. better register for the course. Yeah, when we come to the B region, it may not be applicable. I think that will be explained in the course. Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Hamsavati is asking, can you please share the article? I think he is referring to one article which uh, Mr. Shirke, you mentioned. Uh, that again, I don't know the, where to see the copyright. Okay. And uh, if it is allowed, then we, it is maybe possible. If it is allowed, then you can yeah, share but, it with the uh, cars. I don't think it is allowed yeah, where to purchase it, if anybody wants to. Use if it, it is purchasable. Which yeah, structural concrete issue it is? Which it is structure? the latest, uh, that is the volume number one. Structural concrete, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, Hemant Gaur is asking hard work and detail put in, in introduction workshop. Five out of five star. Oh, very good. So that's a bouquet to Raj Shirke. <laughs> to Skill all, all, on all. use of STM, SFM will give wings to structural engineers to solve D region. Yes. Agreed. Uh, Mr. Shukalan Sharkar is writing, Dear Sir, when more than one row of tensile reinforcing bars is arranged, how to find out the effective width of the ties in the design criteria. Like register for the webinar. <laughs> anyway, uh, it is possible. Huh? Yeah. Fazal Khan is asking, is there any chance to include some live examples of this STM method in the case of slab showing temporary structures as my field is form work scaffold design? Uh, it can be done, but uh, you have to attend the course and maybe no, you can ask. If it is a form work or a uh, trussels, if they are made of a steel, uh, I don't think so. This particular method will be that applicable to the steel structures. Yeah, it is more, it is basically yeah. for concrete for structures concrete, where yeah. you have the co- uh, concrete taking the compression and reinforcement taking Correct. the Correct. tension. Uh, Raj Prabhu, please explain about the internal force flow cannot be understood by FEM. But widely FEM is accepted. Accepted? No. It is addressed to Mr. Hegde. Hegde sahab. In, in, in case of the in case of the strut and tie model, uh, basically that uh, pole force flow is converted into the uh, uh, you know the struts as well as the ties in the form of a truss. Basically in the form of a truss. So it is easy to understand. When you are doing the finite, see if you are Modeling, doing finite element analysis for the strut and tie model, that's a different. If you're doing a simple finite element analysis, finite element analysis, what you're going to get is a stress, stress, you know, in the different region. But in the discontinuity region, how are you going to detail it on the basis of the stresses which you are getting over there? It's difficult to do that. Yes. That is why, you know, to understand the discontinuity region, only the answer is the strut and tie model in the discontinuity region. There is no other uh, way of detailing the discontinuity region. And uh, by doing the finite element, conventional finite element analysis, you will get the stresses. You will get the stresses. But how do you, you know, detail for that? I, th- I don't think it's possible to do it uh, uh, simply. Uh, we, we do it nominally, where the bending moment is there. You just work out the reinforcement on the tensile side. You will just provide it. But that is without understanding the flow of the forces, especially in the discontinuity region. To understand the discontinuity region, I, I think the strut and tie model is the best. That's what I mean. Right. Okay. Next question uh, is from Mr. Hamsavati. Uh, okay. I, uh, yeah, sure. Tandon sir. Uh, sorry. Uh, right. I'm just reading what uh, there is. There, there was a uh, video which has been recorded uh, with myself speaking about the uh, this course. Yeah. And I am reading to you only the portion which deals with the finite element method. Okay. So the usual finite element. Sir, analysis... can you just place your camera slightly on you? Uh, we are not able to see you. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we are seeing. We you are, are not seeing. Able to see me. We are seeing yes. your shoes. We are seeing your shoes. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Is, uh, I think it has to be reversed. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I beg your pardon. How does this? 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 How does this?
रीजन part of the stresses in concrete disappear and is transferred to the reinforcement the matter is even more complex so it's not that easy to uh, just say that you are doing a finite element method and it's it has got so many assumptions built into the method itself uh, and of course people are now trying even to have a, an advanced uh, finite element method where even the reinforcement is uh, uh, is uh, modeled uh, modeled and all that but that is uh, you know at another level altogether uh, but if you want a simplified thing there is nothing to beat the uh, stack and tie modeling in uh, 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 in reinforced concrete in the d region yeah the beauty of a certain type modeling is that you can go to a very simple model to very complex complex uh, right. model you know so the, i mean level of approximation 1 to 4 if you traverse you are actually you know traversing an area from the simplest to the com- the most complex so that is the beauty of this and i i would like to a uh, very interesting point which i would like to share you know the first publication on uh, on this uh, by york slice was in 1987 in pci journal and i have got this paper which is written by and based on which model code uh, 1990 was you know based and this is a paper by york slice called shifer and matias genuin and i i will just read uh, the synopsis of that very interesting synopsis where uh, they say uh, certain parts of structures are designed with almost exaggerated accuracy while other parts are designed using rules of thumb or judgment based on past experience however all parts of the structure are of similar importance a unified design concept which is consistent for all types of structures and all their parts is required and based on this he is promoting the concept which must be based on realistic physical models certain type models like that blah 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 the point which i am saying is when this paper was published by york slice he was actually you know selling the idea of certain type model to be applied whether it is a b region or d region he is telling that you you use a unified one single method you don't have a separate yeah. method for b region and separate for principle for d region and that is how you know this concept was originated initially yeah. so anyway we go to i think there are only two questions remaining so let me just uh, uh, say last uh, one question from tushar in case of a pile cap design we prefer to use this certain type model for design only when the piles are in compression if one of the pile say uh, out of 3 or 4 is in tension we go for bending theory rather than the strut theory why is it so No, no, not at all. You have to use this. I, I, in fact, strut and tie only, and not of bending. So this, this concept. So I think we have to remove this myth that yeah, strut and tie model is not applicable if the pile is in tension. Strut and tie model can be applied in any situation, whether right. the pile is in tension or compression, whether the pile cap is rigid or flexible. Even for a flexible pile cap, strut and tie model can be can be applied really. And uh, so, with this, I have uh, all the. I think I have addressed all the Q and A. Uh, now, I, I just want to clarify one thing to all the people. 
here uh, the idea of you know like having this course is not to compete with the regular finite element analysis every every methods have their own importance so they are complementary to each other they are complementary to each other correct wherever, wherever it is not possible but i think uh, now the fib model fib bulletin 100 has taken the certain time or certain time uh, methods to the different level it's a highly yeah. advanced level it has taken you know that is what we want to propagate you know that's what we want uh, the people to understand and uh, uh, having heard this recordings i will tell you that's going to be very very interesting and uh, 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 the fundamentals of rcc can be understood by 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 going through this course that's what i mean to right. say just i will take for two two more minutes to explain uh, to in continuance to what mr hegde mentioned you see our codes indian codes whether it is irc codes or bis codes so far you know we have we have touched upon certain time model only at the surface uh, and in fact you see the present euro code is based on model code 1990 and the euro code has touched upon certain time model in great detail but when we did our irc 112 we did not take that chapter of certain time model so we we are we are still not at par with euro code leave aside model code model code from 1990 to model code uh, 2010 and now 2020 i mean there is a leap, there is a uh, huge advancement in this concept of certain time model and uh, today in indian scenario where the infrastructure uh, growth is at such a fast pace the technological gap between our engineers and the you know state of the art have to be reduced and therefore it is more important that our engineers uh, uh, know exactly what is happening around the world and what where this technology has gone in terms of the advancement in knowledge in certain time model and stress field math so uh tandan saab would you like to say anything more no, I think that uh, these uh, uh, these promotional videos that we have made, there may be only a few minutes, but I think those should be shared with the participants so that they sure. can get we an will, idea of uh, uh, what Mr. Raj Shirke has presented today is a complete overview. But if yeah. you want to know an introduction to the to what Mr. Raj Shirke has uh, presented today, then I think you should be aware of that also. Yeah. But Mr. Raj Shirke's presentation, my recommendation is that it should be shared with all the... Uh, sure, all sure. The sure, sure. It will be shared. Hello, Mr. Shishir, Shishirda is... Uh... Yeah, Shishirda, welcome. Uh, uh, welcome to this. Uh, uh, would like to hear from you, sir. Uh, you are yeah. one of our associate and you know, uh, the national member group member of I IMC FIB. Thank you, so, sir. Thank you and happy new year to all. Happy and year, particularly sir. thanks to David Fernandez, Secretary General, FIP for supporting this event and an excellent presentation by you and also uh, Sirkeji. Uh, 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 actually, uh, there are legends, Bhomik Sahab, Hegre Sahab and Sirke Sahab. When they are, you are there, naturally it will be a great one. And it will be helpful for academicians also and for students. And congratulations again to FIB members and also for model code. And hope we look forward in future also, you will be able to organize this type of event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shishita. And I request you to kindly uh, you know, circulate to all the civil engineering members of IEI so that they, I mean, we have a discounted price for the uh, Institution of Engineers members. So if they attend the course, it will be great because we would like more and more participation for this uh, course. Uh, I'll contact you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would conclude. Uh, I thank you all. Thanks all to all the panels, panelists. And I would give the last words to Dr. David Fernandez. Uh, after before I conclude, no, I just thank you. Uh, a very impressive presentation, uh, Rajikise. It was very nice to see that. 
I was uh, I'm in contact with the persons that will be there live to answer all the questions after they see the presentation. So they are all will be there uh, depending on the day. And I think this will be very helpful to to see uh, the, the real problems for for real uh, things that are that are happening today, designs or construction. And I think, as you say, this is uh, uh, it's, it's the future. And uh, well, uh, we are finishing the model code 2020. It will be have the first draft uh, maybe available for public to, uh, at the end of June or something like that. So I think it's very important that we share all this information so you can take profit of it. And thank you very much and see you next week, maybe. Thank you. Thank you, thank David. You. Thank you, everyone. And uh, with this, uh, I, I close uh, this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thanks to all the participants for uh, bearing with us. And Thank we you. look forward to see you uh, in the course. Thank you. I love Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you.